Hi! In this video we're going to talk about a new way to represent surfaces. We've actually seen this in some of the videos I've done before with some of the surfaces I plotted, but we haven't really talked about how to represent these equations. So just to kind of connect what we've done before, I've got some different kinds of equations written here. Equations for curves and equations for surfaces. The first equation for the curve I have, y equals x squared, we call that an explicit function. And so that's usually written in the form y equals f of x, or we might have x equals some function of y. But the key is that we're able to solve that for one of the variables. And so a lot of what you learned in Calculus 1 was about explicit functions. And then this next equation here is an implicit equation for a curve. So this equation is not solved for x or y, and really we can't solve it for x or y and have just a single equation that would represent the whole curve. So for example, if I did solve it for y, I'd have to write y equals plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 9x squared all over 4. And that's really two separate equations. So the advantage of implicit equations is it allows you to handle more complicated curves than with just an explicit equation. We have implicit equations for curves often when we looked at level curves for functions of two variables that we often had them in this form where we had f of x, y equals some constant. So those are implicit equations for curves and those are useful in lots of other contexts where maybe we can't write an explicit function. The other way that we've represented curves before is parametric equations for curves. And in two dimensions, we would have x is some function of t, y is some other function of t. But when we looked at parametric equations, that allowed us to extend to curves in three dimensions. And so any curve that's in three dimensions has to be written in parametric form. You can't write that as an explicit function or an implicit equation to get a curve in R3. So this is helpful when we're looking in R2 or R3. And one important idea when you think about parametric equations for curves, when you graph them, uh, so if I just think about one in two dimensions, maybe an ellipse or something like that, uh, what you see on the graph is just the x, y coordinates. You don't really see the t, but the t does induce some kind of orientation around the curve. Other ways that we sometimes represent parametrically defined curves, we sometimes write them in terms of vector valued functions. We might write r of t equals, and then the component functions of our vector are the x, y, z coordinates of the curve. So the vector valued function there represents really vectors, outputs that are vectors, but the terminal points of those vectors represent the points on the curve. When we talk about surfaces, I've got two equations here, and the same idea here, I've got an explicit function, z equals f of x, y, or we might be able to write some equation as x equals a function of y and z, or y equals a function of x and z. Uh, and the next equation there, you should hopefully at this point in the semester recognize that as an ellipsoid. That's an implicit equation. And we had those when we had level surfaces of functions of three variables. But that allows us to deal with more complicated surfaces. But the basic idea then is that we want to then also extend, in the same way we extended curves to parametric equations, uh, we want to extend surfaces to parametric surfaces. And so when I have parametric surfaces, one way that we might represent those is as a set of three equations, x, y and z that are functions, but in general these will be functions of two variables. And our textbook likes to use u and v. And so this will give us a surface in R3, and similar to the way that in a parametric curve you won't see the t values on your curve, but maybe you have an induced orientation. Similarly, when you look at parametric surfaces in R3, you won't see the u and v, you'll just see the x, y, z points. And similarly, occasionally we will want to represent our parametric surface in terms of vector functions. So the same way we did that with curves where we have r of t and we use our functions for x, y, and z as our components, that's what we're going to do here. All right, so we're going to look at some graphs of some examples and then we'll talk about how to generate your own equations of some like that. So I'm going to open up a window for CalcPlot3D here.
and this is just the default window and so you can see when you've got this default window opened up here that you have an explicit function z equals some function of x and y but if you go up here to where it says add to graph you can choose lots of different things we've looked at most of those things here uh, one of them is you can add an implicit surface so i'm going to uncheck the default graph and I'm going to check this one. It just brought up one as an example. You can see that we've got there what looks like to be a hyperboloid of one sheet opening along the y-axis. That's just one of the example equations that came up there and you can type your own equation in there too if you wish. All right and then one what we want to talk about now though is parametric surface. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to uncheck these other ones. So let me maximize this window so we can see a little bit better. So this is just the default param parametric surface that came up here and you can see up here I have, I'm going to go ahead and check the box so we can look at the graph, but you can see that we've got x as a function of u and v, y as a function of u and v, and z as a function of u and v, and then I've got intervals here for my u variable and my v variable, and this one appears to be a sphere, so we'll actually look at that in our next video as one of the examples that we'll talk about how they got this equation, but I want to just do a little bit of kind of playing around here with Calcplot 3D. I'm going to tell it to add another parametric surface, and we'll just look at some of these examples that they have here. All right, so this one is also one we'll talk about later in this chapter. This is called a Merbius strip, and so it has some kind of interesting geometry there. All right, here's another one that we're looking at. This one looks like uh, Gabriel's horn is what that looks like. Uh, which you might have studied in Calc 2 when you looked at uh, volumes of solids of revolution, volume and surface area for solids of revolution. I'm just choosing some different surfaces here and letting it pull up some of the examples that are already built in for Calcplot 3D. This one is a torus, a donut shape. We've got much more complicated kinds of surfaces than we might be able to generate with just XY equations. This one looks like a horn, and so if I let A and B change here, you can see that this looks sort of like a sheep horn or a seashell. Uh, so anyway, you can get a lot of really interesting representations of surfaces here using these parametric equations, so much more complicated equations.